Well, hey everyone, and welcome back. Finishing up our little journey through geologic time here, we have the Cenozoic Era following after the uh, Mesozoic Era, as we discussed in our last geologic history video. Now, the Cenozoic Era, just right off the bat, one of the interesting things you'll notice about it is that it goes from 65 million years ago to present day. 65 million years? That's, that's it. It's a pretty short era. Well, yeah, that's because that's it's going through present day. Um, and, of course, 65 million years is it shorter than most uh, periods in geologic time in our other areas, I think. So that, that really doesn't give us much to work with. And for that reason, the Cenozoic Era frequently is not divided into periods just yet, but rather uh, epochs, which will become a part of a larger period. Um, but that being said, sometimes we do divide it up into periods, and that's what I'm going to do here, uh, just to keep it keep this relatively short, because um, within this period there are five epochs, um, none of which are particularly interesting over the others, and there's one big thing to take away from them. But the first sort of period we have in the Cenozoic era is called the Tertiary Period. And once again, some geologic timescales will not use this, um, They'll only refer to the Cenozoic era in terms of epochs, but to keep things short, um, we're going to just use the Tertiary period, which was, of course, from the beginning of the Cenozoic era, 65 million years ago through 2 million years ago. Okay, and just to just to give you the names, the five uh, the five epochs that it is divided up into are called. Uh, gee, what are they? The this one's kind of hard to spell. I think it's. Yeah, A E, yeah, Paleocene, followed by the Eocene, followed by the Oligocene, followed by the Miocene. Pleocene. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any of those memorized off the top of my head. Well, I, I know their general names, but um, the order, no, uh, because for me, this is, these are mostly very similar, and it's much easier to just fit them into the tertiary period. Um, so only two epochs in the Cenozoic era are not included in this division. Um, and we'll talk about those later. Those are described as being in the quaternary period, you know, tertiary, quaternary, follows in that sort of order. Um, but the big thing that we have here in the tertiary period, the big overarching thing, is just that we have the extinction of all remaining dinosaurs. So at the end of the Mesozoic era, when I said the dinosaurs went extinct, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but it was all non-avian dinosaurs, or all the ground dinos, basically. All the biggest ones, um, you know, you're, the ones you'll hear about most in, in um, I don't know, stuff like Jurassic Park, any, any modern-day representations of dinosaurs. Um, but there actually were a few that survived into the uh, Cenozoic era, mostly avian ones, um, flying ones. You know, usually these smaller ones that would be less affected by the um, drastic change in global climate that comes with uh, huge amounts of dust filling up the atmosphere. So, at this point, all remaining dinosaurs go extinct, so the reign of the lizards is now officially over. And the second thing, by the end of the tertiary period, the planet has basically uh, moved into its sort of into sort of its modern day state, you know. This is where we see the continents finally come into place, the climate uh, sort of stabilize into what it becomes today. So planet moves towards modern day state. And yeah, it should by now if we're only two million years away from present day. So yeah, those are the those are the sort of big things that um I fit under the tertiary period. Um, 
maybe in a future video I'll break down each of these smaller epochs. However, for the sake of keeping it nice and short in this video, I decided just to list them there and talk about the bigger uh, things just within the tertiary period itself. So then after this we have only two more uh, epochs which fit into the quaternary period. However, these are these two are slightly more interesting. We can talk about differences between the two, um, mostly because the final one is very, very interesting in terms of, uh, well, if we relate it to us. But directly following the tertiary period, we have the, uh, I think I'm spelling it right, Pleistocene. I always get mixed up when, yeah, it's E then I, and there's nothing. Yeah, that's probably it. Uh, the Pleistocene Epoch, which was 2 million years ago, following the end of the Tertiary, to about 11,700 years ago. Wow, we're, we're getting almost down to it, aren't we? So the Pleistocene Era, uh, or the Epoch, excuse me, was when we had large, la uh, large land mammals dominate. So, you know, these are going to be, this is where things like... Uh, Mammoths, uh, giant sloths, uh, saber-toothed tigers, this is where your large mammals are going to come into play, and this is where they dominate. That's why Cenozoic Era is called the Age of the Mammals, commonly we took over those reptiles. Uh, also, this is where, you know, of course the first birds were introduced in the uh, in the Mesozoic era in the Jurassic period. However, um, this is when birds also make large developments along with their mammal friends. So, you know, we get, we get a lot more warm-blooded variety and uh, we get a lot more prominence in the world. And finally, just a little fun fact here, this is when uh, Neanderthalus lived. Or, more commonly known, the Neanderthals. You know, those, those sort of bigger, bulkier, dumber looking humans. This is when they lived. Um, found in Europe, I think. I'm not an expert on these sort of things. But, good to know. And that finally brings us up to the Holocene epoch, which of course, if this is the final one, then it ranges from, as we said, 11,700 thousand year, years ago to, um, to present day. So we are currently living in the Holocene epoch. And why we divide this one off uh, seems a little bit silly, doesn't it, for us to break it up and have one that only sp that, that, that spans less than a million years. Um, but the reason we divide this from the uh, the Pleistocene epoch is because, well, there's really one big important thing. This is the age of man, or when written human history begins. We see the first evidence of of intelligent human life. Um, that's as far back as we can trace it. Uh, and then of course it all develops from there. We we get ancient civilizations up to modern day civilizations up to me filming this YouTube video for you today. And yeah, that's that's really what makes the Holocene important. I uh, guess we just put emphasis on it because it's when we come around. Um, but yeah, that brings us up to present day, that's the Cenozoic era in a nutshell. If you would like me to break down the tertiary period, there's honestly not much to say about it. I'd rather not. Um, but that was a general overview. Hopefully you guys found it informative. Otherwise, good review. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video. Ciao. Launch herbivores. Which, of course, when we think of dinosaurs, we usually either think of the large, scary, uh, things like the Allosaurus or the
Tyrannosaurus Rex, you know, the big carnivores of Apex Predators. However, you know, there's the other side that we think of maybe the more gentle giants, like, uh, what's this guy?